Two years ago at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, EA took to the stage and blew the roof off of the entire event with their amazing Star Wars Battlefront panel. Well, this year, they're back to do it again in Orlando. Your exclusive first look at what's in store for Star Wars Battlefront 2 starts right now. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. So please give a huge round of applause, a warm welcome to your Galaxy Stage host, David Collins! Star Wars Battlefront 2! Come on, EA Dice, Star Wars Battlefront 2. This game is huge. Look at how many cards I have. This game is massive. We've been talking about what we're going to share for a few days now. Of course, they've been working on this game very hard for you for a long time. Probably since the last time we talked about it, two years ago. I was fortunate enough to be here on stage. How many were here in Anaheim for Star Wars Battlefront? Yeah. How many of you played Star Wars Battlefront like there's no tomorrow? Me too, I'm sure. I think you shot me, you shot me, you shot, you definitely shot me, you shot, yeah. Well, <laughs> trying to get to level 50 and beyond, but yeah, still playing Battlefront like crazy. There's so much more to talk about. We're gonna get right into it because there is a lot to cover. Please give a warm Star Wars Celebration Orlando 2017 Galaxy Stage welcome to developers who have traveled from all over the world, from EA, the creators of Star Wars Battlefront 2, come on out. Give them Welcome to Star Wars Celebration. How's it been so far? Amazing. Amazing. Wow, wow, look at this. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and for those of you watching at home as well on StarWars.com and all around the world, welcome to this Battlefront panel. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves to all these Star Wars fans and Battlefront fans? Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Webster. I'm the executive producer of Battlefront 2, and I'm also the GM at Criterion. And this is my first celebration. Welcome. Hi, my name is Bernd. Uh, I am creative director at DICE, and I actually brought something to uh, uh, prove my credentials to this crew. Can you put that up, please? What would you bring? This. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 1984! Yes, beat that. <laughs> so, this is the first and only fan club I ever joined. So you have here in front of you a German Jedi from 1984. How about that? <laughs> I hear it's very useful to have a German Jedi in game development. That's what I uh, hear. I hope so. Yes. Go ahead, Paul. I'm Paola Giulio. I'm the game, I'm the content producer at Motive, and uh, my focus is in making sure we'll deliver a high quality game campaign. And I brought nothing, and I feel bad about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, my name is Mark Thompson. I'm the game director at Motive Studios, um, and I'm super excited to be here representing our awesome team back in Montreal. I hope everyone is watching. I'll be checking when I get back. For the dev team watching, welcome and thank you. So let's, let's just get right into it, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot to talk about. This is a huge game. So you're really bringing out the big guns for this thing. Is that right? Yeah, we absolutely are. I mean, I've been making games for a long time. And I think now the modern blockbuster video games that we're talking about, that we're making these days, uh, uh, where um, the fidelity of play and visuals and audio and the experiences that we're making, well, it really you know, needs us to, um, to fully realize the potential of, uh, of, of Battlefront 2. We've brought together um, three studios. We've got uh, DICE, the masters for the last decade and a half on multi award-winning multiplayer um, shooter games. We have a, a new studio in Motive that is filled with uh, veteran um, action game uh, uh, developers and game makers, and my home studio in uh, Criterion in the UK. Um, you know, we don't think we're the masters of game feel, and uh, so the three of us together, it's a stellar lineup, um, creating probably what I think is the most ambitious 
title that EA has ever embarked upon. It certainly sounds like it with people working on it all over the world in multiple studios. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, Bert, I have a question for you. Now, I know you're fairly new to the team, but what's it like coming in after the first Battlefront? Uh, you know, what's next? What's next for Star Wars Battlefront 2? So, I didn't work on the first game, and the cool thing is that, that I got introduced into the franchise in, in game form as a fan. And what struck me most, what still gives me goosebumps, is that I was on Hoth all of a sudden. It's a moment that I've dreamt of since I was a kid, since 84. And this game, Battlefront, put me there. And it still gives me goosebumps. And then uh, when we started thinking about the, the next game, yeah. um, we, something that we do is we try to deconstruct the experience. What is it that gives you those goose goosebumps in the first place? And uh, there are certain things that are so uh, at the heart of a Star Wars. Your blaster, your lightsaber, your ship, and also your family which is extremely important. And what stood out uh, the most for us was that there's a chance for everybody to become a hero. Right. And that's what is our lens, our mantra, our focus for the whole development. Anyone on the battlefield can be a hero. Exactly. Right. So that's, that's amazing. So if you're a soldier, not just a Jedi, if you're a soldier, if you're a stormtrooper, anything. Anything. And that's how you're developing the game. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, so I understand that uh, you brought something to show us. Is that Maybe. right? Maybe. <laughs> now, normally when we do these kind of panels, we talk, we talk, and talk, and then at the very end we show something. But you guys are just getting right to it, right? Yes. to see a really big, wonderful Battlefront 2 reveal trailer. <laughs> Let's roll it. Check it out. Battlefront 2, right here. I've waited 30 years for this. I still remember my last orders. The day the real war began. A rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. We weren't expecting special forces. That's the point, Sergeant. Impossible. Commander, what do we do now? We avenge our Emperor. Resistance. Rebellion. You will burn these ideas away. Small, all right. ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right, all right, okay, okay. Well, uh, wait a second. 
Now, there was a lot of great multiplayer stuff there, especially at the end of that thing. I, I was seeing so much great stuff, right? I mean, <laughs> but uh, let's start to break this down a little bit because we, we got to talk about a few things. I hope you don't mind. I got a lot of questions. Uh, the first one is we got to talk about that single player campaign, that character. <laughs> Single player campaign and character. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. What can you tell us about that? Um, so what we, the rebellion has its heroes. It has its heroes like Skywalker, it has its heroes like Jyn Erso. Um, but who are the heroes of the empire? Who are the soldiers that can inspire the empire in the galactic civil war? Who were the elite pilots? that kids in the galaxy grew up dreaming of being. They wanted to go to these academies to become these elite pilots who were the commandos on the battlefield, on the front lines of combat, that could inspire legions of stormtroopers to be the great empire. Um, and that was, that was the starting point for this story. We wanted to take off the helmet of a stormtrooper and find out who they were, why they believed in the empire, um, and what it meant to be an elite imperial special forces soldier. And <laughs> I'm sure there are more than a few people who might be interested in that. Some Stormtrooper fans out here, I, I hear. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, the first thing we did when we started working on the game was talk to our players, and most of them didn't want to relive the exact story they seen in the movie on TV. So thank you very much for that, because that gave us the great opportunity to work on a new untold story uh, that was complementary to the Star Wars universe, but will also bring a new perspective by giving the point of view of the Empire. The point of view of the Empire. I mean, that's so interesting as a Star Wars fan. I mean, there's, there, that's a, pers a perspective we haven't even really explored at, to this level before. Um, another question that comes to mind then is, when is this story set? I mean, we, we saw some stuff in the trailer, but can you confirm that? Yeah, sure. One of the, uh, one of the first ideas we have, and sometimes you just, you just need a moment of magic inspiration, um, and then you can, like, you can weave a whole story from that. Um, and I think our defining moment was we had this idea... Um, you know, when you see the Death Star 2 explode, um, in the movies and in that narrative, it's framed as a victory. You know, you see everyone um, celebrating, partying with the Ewoks on Endor, um, fireworks uh, across Coruscant. It's a big celebration for everyone. Um, and we, we thought about this idea, like, what would it be like to be a stormtrooper on the ground and to look up to the sky and see the Death Star explode and for that to be a moment of loss, a moment of defeat? Um, and so that when you, when you take off the, the helmet in disbelief and you look up to the sky, you immediately put that helmet back on with a new hardened resolve about how you need to take the fight back to the rebellion and uh, that the rebellion needs to die. And that was kind of, that was, the, that was the starting moment for the story. And so we thought, let's pick it up from there. Let's, let's tell a story that begins right at the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, and then when Motive started to work on this campaign, it was at the time when The Force Awakens was still in theaters. We were all super excited about that jump of 30 years because that leaves so many amazing questions. We were asking questions as, as fans and as developers. What happened in those 30 years? And so we thought, hey, let's, let's try and tell one of those stories that connects these two amazing trilogies together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you said it best. <laughs> now, this, this elite soldier idea, who was that? Does she have a name? Of course. That is Aiden Versio. Aiden Versio. Yeah, and she is the commander of Inferno Squadron, uh, which is a brand new elite special forces unit that we've uh, created with uh, Lucasfilm. You've been working with Lucasfilm. Imagine, I imagine if you're involved in story as deeply as you are now, you, you must be talking to Lucasfilm on a daily basis. Yeah, and, and so before, um, you know, before we get into Lucasfilm, I'll just clarify, this will be a canon story. This is authentic Star Wars. I, I say that because the, Steve doesn't like the word canon. So I said it before Steve. he's here. So, uh, well, you just mentioned Steve. I think now is a perfect time to bring out uh, uh, someone from Lucasfilm Story Group, Steve Blank. Steve, you back there? Come on out, say hello. Steve Blank from Lucasfilm Story Group. Come on out. Hi. You got it in stage. You said that word that I don't know. That's fine. <laughs>
That's okay. Uh, so let's let's start from the beginning. How did all, how did this whole process start on this with Story Group? Yeah, sure. So I mean, as as Mark mentioned, right, this was something that's been in the works for a while, right? They saw Force Awakens in theaters, and then they came to us at Lucasfilm, and they sat down both with with Story Group, including Pablo and Leland and Matt Martin and myself with our games production team internally at Lucasfilm with people like Matt Philbrand and Orion and Jeff and Marco. And they sort of came to the table being Mark and Motive and said, hey, we're really interested in this, this time span, right? Between Return of the Jedi and um, Force Awakens. And we'd really like to tell a story from an Imperial point of view, specifically in that span. And what they had done, they had done a lot of great homework before they even came to us and said, okay, we've been reading a lot of the new materials that you put out there. We've been reading Aftermath, we've read Shattered Empire, we've read Lost Stars. And so we understand, right, those details that you're, you're starting to lay the groundwork for and we really wanna use those to help us tell a story. And we were on board from day one with how awesome that sounded to kind of have that opportunity to, to tell a little bit more of what happens in that space and specifically to do it from a really new perspective and a different point of view and and just to give props specifically to our writer Mitch Dyer he was the one Mitch! <laughs> who had done a lot of that reading and a lot of and a lot of that work so this is our, our writer <laughs> Who has, who has read literally everything ever written about Star Wars. <laughs> which, which is awesome from our perspective because it comes in and it makes those conversations so much easier because you're all starting from the same place. And I, I want to jump into on, on that. It's not only that we cooperate on, on, on story and characters, you know, the big things. Yeah. I, I think I, someone on our team is talking to Lucas every day and no matter how small or how big an item is, we always talk. It's like every ability, every blaster, every, yeah. every screw on the little starfighter, we talk about it and we find, try to find what is best because it has to be Star Wars, obviously. Right. Uh, it has to be Battlefront and it has to be right for our game. And that has been trem a tremendous pleasure. We also geek out a lot. Yes, admittedly. there's a lot of geeking out. That's actually, uh, that's actually warm and comforting to hear, strangely, because I'm kind of geeking out a little bit right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, so I want to I go back to Inferno Squad and Aiden. How did this idea start? Sure. So there were, right, there were multiple considerations in, in building out a team and an idea like Inferno Squad, right? And it comes from, right, we're, we're making a video game first and foremost, and we know that while still telling a compelling story. So we wanted to find what was this right group of people that had the skill sets that would make sense for a game that we wanted there to be aerial combat, we wanted there to be ground combat, and we wanted you know this character to be able to be proficient at both, right? And then from a story perspective, we were thinking, well, who, who are the most devout, right, to what they're following when it comes to leadership, who's somebody who can be fully invested in the Empire, who can sit there and watch something like the Death Star 2 explode and go, I am going to double down on my commitment to this Empire now, right? This, is, this strengthens my belief in what we have and, and what the Empire stands for. And so all of that combined really led to this idea of like special operatives, right? People who have that type of training and also have that type of belief in what they are doing and those skills to be able to pull that off. And that, that marriage of those two is where Inferno Squad came from. It's such a fresh take on heroism. You know, it's such a, it's such a unique perspective for Star Wars. And uh, I, I just, I imagine you could just go on and on and on about uh, her history. Uh, you know, what motivates this? I, I mean, I just want to find out so much more about this person. I mean, this must be something that you're exploring very deeply in order to tell this story in a compelling way. Sure, yeah. I mean, sort of the backstory of, of Aiden. And just to pause at Aiden for a second, we do have uh, our actress who plays Aiden Versio here today. Janina Gavankar is here oh, in our front up, row, Janina. if she can stand up. So there she is. Right? And she is, just to, to give her a moment of awesomeness, right? There's, there's a lot that we've put into this character, right? And there's, there's only so much that you can put on a page and there's only so much that you can talk about about how you want this, this character to be a hero and to, to really stand for somebody who is heroic in the eyes of the Empire. Um, and Janina really was, enabled, was able to embody that, right? And did a fantastic job to what we had imagined Aiden always being. And so we're really excited for people to kind of see more of her and see this story play out. And we have been spending quite a bit of time 
uh, also thinking about what, what her backstory would be, right? And, and who Aiden is and also who Inferno Squad is. Um, and keen fans might recognize that name from something already. Inferno Squad? That's the one. <laughs> Does it ring a bell? <laughs> Certain announcements. Well, we have another, I see there's a little empty space next to you, Steve. There is. Couch there. Uh, we have another guest, shall we bring her out? I think now's a good time. Well, let's do that because I want to learn more about Aiden Versio and to tell us a bit more, please welcome Christy Golden, author of Star Wars Dark Disable and the new book, Star Wars Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad. Come on out, Christy. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome. Welcome to Star Wars Celebration Thank again. Thank um, you. So Thank you. I, I want to ask you about the book. What can you tell us, and, uh, and what did you think about it the first time you were approached about Inferno Squad? Well, first of all, it was a really solid script, so that gave me a good jumping off point to get an idea of, of who these characters are. Um, we took the story back four years, and um, when you pick up this book, you'll get a chance to see how they all met and what they thought of each other and what their first mission was and how they learned to become this, this well-oiled machine. And of course, as all good stories are, it takes a little bit of doing to get there. And are we, uh, no, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I just, I, I mean, I, where, where are we going to go during this story? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I have so many questions. I mean, are, are new, new locations? Uh, I mean, where is she from, her family? Uh, anything you can tell us about that? Well, it's, it's really great. There's a, there are multiple locations, and one of them is her home world and that of her father, Admiral Versio, um, at uh, a place called Vardos. 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 And um, I was given uh, some of the art to look at to be able to set the scenes there appropriately. And it's, as you can see, it's quite gorgeous and very striking. Um, and one of the things that the team sent over, and I, I love this, I love being so involved at this level, um, was these trees that you see here. And they are positioned over pools so that when the leaves fall and they come in contact with the water, they bleed. And I was like, oh. I can run with this. <laughs> Just such beautiful little bit of, of details that as a writer, I get to give some history to and backstory of. It was great. Well, and this is such, this looks like such a, a new environment. There's so many, it's so different from uh, what I remember in Battlefront. Is there anything else you can tell us about this environment that's unique for, for Battlefront? Uh, because, I mean, I see Imperial flags everywhere. Right, uh, this is obviously under imperial occupation. Yes, um, yes. Vardos uh, actually was brought into the empire by Aiden's father. So she has a legacy to live up to, big time. I see, so this is a part of her family, to your point earlier. This is, this is it, the empire is personal for her. Yes, absolutely. Now, is this like a peaceful imperial rule as opposed to an occupation? Is this, uh, yeah. you know, if, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's exactly right, because that's something that we had developed sort of in conjunction as we were thinking about the game and, and a piece that we were able to pass back to the book because it, it was so foundational for Aiden. And the, the way that this kind of space came about was since we were thinking of shifting the perspective from the protagonist point of view, right, to be on the Imperial side, that also meant, well, we would need a different sort of view on, on a planet and where she's from and what she comes from. And so normally when you see the Empire, right, on planets in, in Star Wars so far, you, there's a lot of occupation, there's a lot of sort of force used to, to get onto those planets. And so we wanted to come from a place of, well, what would it look like if a, a planet willingly joined the Empire and fully believed in it and was absolutely 100% invested in it? And so we started to design that and incredible props, right? This is, this is no easy feat to design a new location in the Star Wars galaxy. It is a challenge and there is a lot of work, as you can see from laugh Mark's laughing, um, <laughs> that goes into designing a new location. And on the motive side with Chris, and on our side with Hez, like there was so much collaboration to really design this place to feel that home of the Empire and a place that was willingly part of it. And that's why you see a lot of these more brutalist inspired structures and so much flair in those flags. Now, and this is a very uh, sort of urban environment too. You know, this isn't like the open battlefield of Hoth. Paula, what can you tell us about, about Vardos in terms of gameplay? Well, 
Vardos will provide completely new design and gameplay opportunities because you'll be playing inside the city, so that's completely changed the gameplay from the, you know, open sandbox style that you have in the multiplayer. Um, and that's going to be only one of the new locations that Aiden is going to visit. So you, you, have, you have different locations. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, you have different locations, and, and, and you have different heroes on, on each world. Can you talk a little bit about that process and working with Motive in terms of figuring all of that out? Either yeah, one so, of you, please, or uh, both. So this, um, I mean, so, so the, the story in the campaign really follows Aiden's journey, right, from the end of Jedi up to The Force Awakens. Um, and, you know, as we follow her journey, we, we wanted it to, to touch and cross paths with some of the iconic heroes um, of Star Wars um, from a narrative, but also from a gameplay point of view, because I think what, what differentiate, differentiates Battlefront for me is the fact that you get to step into the shoes of these iconic heroes. You get to put down the blaster and pick up a lightsaber, um, and you get to be a Jedi and kick ass on the battlefront. Um, and so we wanted the campaign um, to be a reflection of that. We wanted a, the similar gameplay experience and flow in the story, and so we have these chapters, an unspecified at this point number of chapters, um, where we'll step into the shoes of the iconic heroes um, and we get to experience not only different gameplay but also a different chapter in these characters' lives, which is where the collaboration with Lucasfilm uh, dovetailed so closely. Yeah, and I mean, clearly like what Mark was saying, it's, it's a big undertaking, right, if you're going to tell new chapters and stories of characters that are particularly ongoing, right, and we know are, are still working in, in different mediums and there are new stories coming, but it was something that they brought to the table from day one as sort of like, you know, a core principle of Battlefront, like they've been saying, is to step into the shoes of a hero and really become some of those characters. And so we knew from, from the start that that was something we wanted to bring also to the single player campaign. And so we were finding ways to bring meaningful characters and known characters into that campaign in really sort of respectful and organic ways to the main story of, of Aiden and Inferno Squad. Um, and also respectful of the legacies of those famous characters that are coming. And so what I can say, I can't specify how many. Okay. But what I can say is in the single player mode, in story mode, you will get to play as Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren. Um, <laughs> not bad. Thank you. <laughs> it's not bad. It's we not saw bad. them in the trailer, and I was, I was just thinking, oh, please, timeline, put together two and two is four. Yes, please, <laughs> Kylo Ren and Luke Skywalker. That is so awesome. Yeah. Wow, that is really, really incredible. Uh, now, Chris, I know that your time is limited with us on this panel, but I know you have some news to share about your book. Is that I, right? I do, but, but before we do this, I have to say a shout out. Uh, so often when you work in, with media tie-ins, the books are regarded as just kind of advertising material for the core product, but I have felt so included and so involved and so much a part of this. It's really been very, very special, and I have to give a big shout out to Janina, who reached out to me to talk about Aiden, to get some more of her history and her backstory, to bring that to her performance. So. That was so appreciated and so much fun. It's, it's been a great collaboration across the board, right? We've all been talking and there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that we're seeding between these two, these two stories that I'm excited for people to learn about. Yeah, it's been, it's been a blast. Um, the book is now entitled Battlefront. Inferno Squad. <laughs> Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad. And there's that cover. That is a gorgeous cover, yeah. Round of applause, that's amazing. And it will be out on July 25th. July 25th. Excellent. Well, any, any final thoughts? I know, I know you have to go, but, but thank you so much. Any closing thoughts? Uh, I'm as excited as anybody. I just saw the trailer myself yesterday, and I am completely blown away. This looks like it's going to be so much fun, and it's, it's such an honor to be connected with something like this. And I, my hope is that if, when you read the book and then you come to the game, it's going to give you a, a much deeper and richer experience because you will have seen where they came from and now are seeing where they're going. So. I guess, I mean, just to build out my point a little bit, I'm just excited for people to be able to get their hands both on the, on the novel and on the game and see sort of all of the hard work that everybody's been doing across these teams to, to tell a coherent story and to really 
understand who Inferno Squad is, learn about Aiden and, and see her story through both of these products. And then, of course, just as a fan of Battlefront and games, there are some great gameplay moments that we have integrated into the single player mode that I am excited for people to, to learn about and play too. So that's, there's a lot of things to be excited about. I cannot wait. Please give a round of applause to Chrissy Golden and Steve Blank. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time. You. Thank you. I feel, I feel like we just covered so much. But you know, we haven't even talked about multiplayer yet. I, want, I mean, after playing so much of Battlefront, I have so many questions about multiplayer. And, and game mechanics, look at that. It's beautiful. So, uh, Bernd, multiplayer was the centerpiece of the original battle, Battlefront. What do yes, you guys, it was. Huh? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes. Uh, are you, what are you changing? Anything? What's uh, new? What's well, up? Well, a couple of little things that we brought to make it better. Like one thing is that, that we thought, together with Lucas, is what better opportunity than this year, the 40th anniversary, uh, is there to bring more uh, errors into the game. So we decided to have prequel, original prequel. trilogy, and the new movies represented in the game. All eras of Star Wars <laughs> playable in Battlefront 2. All. And of course, every era comes with its iconic heroes, like our favorite here. Or oh, actually, it's Matt's favorite. It's, I've got such a man crush on Darth Maul. <laughs> it's I don't true. I don't mind admitting it. <laughs> yeah. Don't so, um, uh, what we did is we added a lot of things. Um, I think, no, I'm sure that this is for certain the biggest game that I ever worked on. There's so many things in there. There's more, more weapons, more vehicles, more heroes, more, more everything, basically. Uh, and I can't wait until our players get their hands on it. But w one thing that we also wanted to do is if we, you, you know this, this um, uh, mantra that we have, the hero's journey, that was really important to us, that it's represented in every aspect of the game. So when we looked at our troopers, uh, we wanted to give them an opportunity to grow, to develop, so that a squad of really good players maybe has a chance to stand up against Darth Maul. So we introduced classes, uh, you can unlock new abilities. Yes! <laughs> I, I think that was the right call, Matt. <laughs> so this, this, is a, this is a pretty... This is a pretty uh, Pretty. This is a huge change, and, and, and like, yeah, it's incredible. So you have different classes, and you're basically upgrading. Let's get into the nitty gritty of this. You're upgrading how your character works in match, but also can you know through multiple matches. Yes. So, so infantry, sniper, heavy gunner, officer, those kind of things. That's what you mean by character class. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. They will be very familiar to all players. They're iconic to the Star Wars universe, so because it, it kind of because we had maps, we have maps from all the eras. We kind of had to do troopers from all eras too. Maybe we didn't really think that through in the beginning. <laughs> That's a lot of assets that you're creating. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. And is that what you mean by huge? Would you say this? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I, I think this is a great image as well. Um, yeah, and it's yeah, this is representative of of, uh, of in game, and it's uh, it's great to have that breadth across not just you know the classes that we have, but uh, across all of the eras too. But the, and the other thing that we looked at is, not only wanted we to expand this game in scope, so make it broader, we also wanted to give it more depth. There's more reason, even more reason to stick around longer, to play more, to make your trooper the best trooper on the battlefield, or to improve your hero to become a better hero. Right, so it's not just like a, a bonus pickup, you actually can, say that again? You can improve your hero to be a better hero? Yes, you can. You can upgrade your heroes. That's gorgeous. So, how does this work in terms of the different worlds that you're going to be in and the heroes? How, how does that work in Battlefront 2? Uh, what can you tell us about it? What's different this time around? Well, I think just, just talking about the heroes, I mean, these, these iconic... I mean, we've talked about troopers and a, a hero journey inside troopers, and I think that's something that's, you know, deep deeply rooted inside um, 
the Star Wars universe where you have a journey um, from you know a farm boy to you know this super iconic uh, heroic character and this time that the heroes there's such a in, in terms of the game there's such a game changer so when they when they enter the battlefront it's a moment it's a real moment I think it's a massive differentiator for Battlefront 2 um, this time we've got uh, heroes that are way more physical uh, than we've than we've had before so and I don't just mean in terms of their uh, abilities but you know how they feel and, and how we expect people to play with them and how we expect um, uh, people to then uh, choose to progress with uh, the particular heroes that we have and, and, and customize them to suit how they how they like to play. That's an incredible amount of depth that you're that you're adding there. That's great. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, this is this is breadth and depth. No, so depth in the in the combat and in, and inside the systems. That, you know, it's just a, an incredible multiplayer team at Dice that are, that are bringing this together. You know, a decade and a half of you know super experience and really bringing that together in. Uh, uh, inside Star Wars, it's 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 a great combination. Uh, I think one one thing that it's at, at the heart of of Dice is this freedom of choice that you have. We give you a lot of tools, and uh, but how you face a challenge as a team, going up against a hero or in a starfighter or uh, as a hero is really up to you how you face that challenge. In, uh, we call it rock paper scissor. So there's always a way for you to express yourself in gameplay. And I think that this is truly unique to the type of game that we are making. That you are able, together with your friends, to create these awesome moments of taking down the AT&T at the last second and then everything blows up and all of a sudden Darth Vader appears. You know, these moments that just live once, they're truly yours. They're truly your own unique moment. Nobody else will experience it exactly like that. No, Camino. That's a, that's 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 amazing. I mean, so I mean, there's so much depth and detail. I mean, are we seeing that kind of depth in the world as well? I mean, look how gorgeous those worlds look. I mean, for example, I mean, I, I think I saw a Tauntaun or two in that trailer. You know, that's that's yes, new. you did. <laughs> you did. You certainly did. And there, and there it is. <laughs> I, it's an important point to make because um, uh, we, you know, we're, we're covering all of these eras and we're going to locations we haven't been before. Um, and it's not just the surface and the structures that we're really concentrating on this time around. It's trying to make these locations feel alive. And so that's why bringing the Tauntauns into the game and the other things that we're doing inside these particularly recognizable moments that make these locations feel alive. It's just such a rich universe for us to draw upon. And uh, players are going to see a lot of that uh, in this game too. And also, I've been waiting to ride a Tauntaun since 1984. So now I can. <laughs> As any good German Jedi is yes, waiting indeed. to ride a Tauntaun. Indeed. I think we all are. Well, now you've talked about multiple, you've talked about the hero's journey. I just I have this other question that I've been wanting to ask you guys about. I've been a little shy up to this point, but can you talk to us a little bit about the pilot's journey? Can we talk about vehicles? Can we talk about space? We, let's talk about space. The space, space battles, there's the fantasy of being inside a space battle. It's such a, star, it's such a thing for Star Wars. I mean, in my, in my head, when I think about, um, you know, when we're talking about the, uh, the Return of the Jedi, these, these moments of the epic capital ships and, and starfighters battling it out, that, that is going to be a significant part of this game for multiplayer. Yes! <laughs> I'm sorry, I cut you off. I, I just had a, a, an expression no. of joy kind of... Yeah, much like we did. I mean, this is, this is the area that we're focusing on uh, uh, at my home studio in uh, Criterion. And, um, and for us, it starts with, you know, this, uh, this feeling of, of what it's like to, you know, to put you in. We had a pitch, actually. We started with uh, the speed of bunk mission in the original Battlefront. Um, and then uh, we developed the X-Wing, uh, the Star Wars uh, X-Wing VR mission. Uh, which we uh, yeah, that was amazing, which we released right? in December, and um, 
And for us, this progression into epic, uh, epic Star Wars space battles with, uh, with a, a range of starfighters across all of our eras as well. And, and it starts with how uh, these ships feel and, you know, and, and in your mind it's delivering on that fantasy of being in combat. And we extend, as I said, a, a across uh, all of those, uh, all of the eras. So you're going to get to see, um, you know, prequel era vulture droids and uh, first order star, uh, so first order tie fighters. Tie fighter, wow! All kinds of ships. And yeah, and those ships they're going to mirror um, what we're doing with the troopers with classes. So uh, different ships have different different roll types. Oh. Different ships have different roll types, and, and of course we have um, we have hero ships as well. And so those uh, those different roll types, those are also uh, progress inside the progression. They are customizable. So very much like what we're doing with the troopers, we're extending into the starfighter pilots because you know that is a part of a of a, of a hero's journey on 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 foot as a trooper. So ships can be heroes. Exactly right. Yeah, and we have hero heroic ships as well. You can upgrade ships, you can upgrade troopers. Now, I, I'm assuming if you're on Hoth, you're going to see snow troopers. If you are, uh, you know, on Camino, you're going to see clone troopers, that kind of thing. Is, that's kind of how it works? That is correct. Okay. That's amazing. There's just so much to look at here. I, I, really, um, I really want to play this thing. When are we going to get a chance to uh, get our hands on this thing? Well, let me tell you. Please. <laughs> so I can, uh, I can tell you all the worldwide release is the 17th of November this year. Now, there are a few ways in which you're gonna be able to, to play the game a little earlier than that. Um, and if you want some more details on that, then you can uh, head to our website. That's great, and that's right around The Last Jedi time. Yes, it is. This is right before The Last Jedi. Well, I can't wait, and uh, I just want to go around to you guys with, with uh, any more thoughts, any more closing thoughts. I know we still have a little bit more, and I kind of want to play that trailer again. Oh, yes, please. You guys want to see that trailer? Okay, but any closing thoughts before we get there? Um, yeah, for me, as I said at the top, this is my first celebration, and um, it's just amazing to be able to share these details on behalf of our teams that we have uh, at DICE, the amazing team at DICE that are working on multiplayer and the other teams that we have at Criterion in, uh, in the UK and at Motive, it's just such a privilege to be able to share that with an audience that is so, you can just feel the energy in this room. It's just a real privilege, so thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I wanna say, um, a big shout out to the home teams, you know, in Montreal, in Stockholm, and in Guildford, right? That's right? Because we're sitting here, but they are really doing the work. So without you guys out there, I wouldn't be here. I would have nothing to show. And a round of applause, please. Huge effort. Game development is just such a huge effort. So much hard work and so much love. You and so much fun. And a lot of fun. Uh, I guess we feel very, you know, excited at Motif to be represented at Celebration for the first time ever and really lucky to be building this single player campaign on the foundation of two exceptional IPs like Battlefront and Star Wars. Um, <laughs> thank you. And we're really looking forward to show you guys what we've been working on on November 17. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm super excited about uh, in the campaign getting to take everyone on the journey of putting on Inferno Squadron's armor and truly believing in the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Now, we're, we're not done yet. There's still a couple things, right? Now, we talked about The Last Jedi. What can you tell us about The Last Jedi? Any, anything, any content? Well, what can we talk um, about here? so we're a little bit ahead of the, uh, of the film in terms of our release. Uh, what I can say is that we have a, a terrific pre-order uh, offer. Um, <laughs> it's, this is good. Uh, around The Last Jedi Heroes and where players are going to get access to um, uh, Last Jedi costumes for, uh, for Rey and for Kylo um, and also uh, yeah. access to um, uh, Last Jedi uh, Millennium Falcon and an as yet 
Yeah. Uh, as yet detailed First Order Starfighter. First Order Starfighter. That is awesome. Now, we have a couple other things. Uh, before we play the trailer, my understanding is, wait, remind me again, how many of you were here in 2015, or actually in Anaheim? <laughs> There's something we did then that we haven't done yet Got now. T Not t-shirts, something better if I remember. So, for those of you watching at home, over the next couple of weeks, if you follow EA Star Wars on social media, you'll get a chance to do this too, but right now, Look at this, PS4. Tell us about this. So, thank you to Sony. Uh, they have provided this custom Star Wars Battlefront 2 box with Aiden on the front. I want you to pull the lid off. With, with a PS4 Pro inside, custom controller. There's one of four, and we're giving two away right here. Right here. So, now, <laughs> there are, and this is, I want to be very, uh, very tactful about how I say this here, I, if you gently inspect underneath your seat, there are very clearly marked little tags that say winner, very clearly, not this chair was made in the chair factory, <laughs> not this is a piece of chewing gum, <laughs> hey, come on up, here's one right here. Come on up, come on up. No, here, come on up here, come on up here, come on up here. All the way around, all the way around. You okay? You all right? So what's your name? Marley. Marley, welcome, where are you from? New York. New York, thank you for coming. Congratulations, you are a winner of a PlayStation 4 Pro Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, we have we have we have some stuff for you. Why don't you why don't you come on back there? We'll take we'll take care of you. And right up here, here's the other one. Congratulations. What's your name? Sander. Sander, where are you from? Texas. In Texas. Welcome. Congratulations. Yeah. Texas in the house. Congratulations. Go on this way, and, and you'll have you'll uh, have you'll be united with your Battlefront 2 PS4 Pro. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Once again, on social media, and you're not going to want to go anywhere. On social media, if you follow EA Star Wars online, you'll have an opportunity in the coming weeks to win the other two. So be sure to do that as well. Now, uh, I, I want to say uh, uh, to those of you that are watching in here, you're going to want to stick around. But I want to tell everyone watching at home and on the Star Wars show, uh, on the live stream, thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, you guys want to see that trailer one more time? <laughs> Come on, do you want to see that trailer one more time? Yeah. All right, let's roll it. I've waited 30 years for this. I still remember my last orders. The day the real war began. The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. We weren't expecting special forces. That's the point, Sergeant. Impossible. Commander, what do we do now? We avenge our Emperor. Resistance. Rebellion. You will burn these ideas away. Save 